All right, so we get started with a uh, webinar. Welcome everyone, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the, where you're connecting with us at the XAPA, Advise, Invest and Advocate. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome you all for uh, this uh, webinar where we will focus today on um, digital training solutions in response to risk mitigation for procurement practices. But, um, the scale needed to really have an impact on the environmental and social issues that we all want to address. Starting with um, uh, limited but very useful technical uh, details, uh, our webinar is recorded. You're welcome to make sure uh, to invite or share uh, with uh, colleagues and other interested people. You can change your name, uh, but for the quality of the discussion for everyone, you are by default muted. You may use the chat function if you want to interact with us and, and ask questions or take part in the discussion. It's very welcome and a good way for us to have an interactive uh, session. Um, the camera is automatically turned off uh, and uh, it's a good way to manage the energy footprint of this uh, webinar, one. And two, at the end of the day, we think we can all focus on the slides and use that in more of a podcast um, mode. Um, discussion than anything else. Um, so we focus on the content more than how we look like each of us. Um, importantly, a short poll uh, will be uh, released at the far end of our discussion, uh, which is uh, going to last an hour. Um, so something like 10 minutes ahead of the closing of our uh, webinar today. Please make sure to contribute. It's very useful for us uh, to get your feedback, understand how best we can improve uh, those discussions, which are part of our advocacy initiative um, and clearly a good way for us to understand our best, we can share um, the best of our work uh, to inspire you all and ensure that you can have great impact in the way you are uh, leading your own activities. Getting into the core of our webinar today. So today, at this webinar is part of a long series of webinars that have been held by uh, XAPA for um, months, uh, years, I should even say. Um, many of our webinars are focused on several aspects related to digital training and impact investing solutions. In some cases, we've talked in the past about human rights risks assessment. We've talked about um, uh, ESG and green finance. We've talked about um, sustainability strategies, and here we are kind of uh, um, putting all these uh, pieces together so you can look at those different chapters to focus on something extremely important to us. Um, improving lives of uh, smallholder farmers, um, because we are going to focus on commodity sourcing, but the kind of similar approach could apply very well to um, workers um, across supply chain. I'm speaking on behalf of our organization to kind of facilitate the discussion. My name is Farid Badash, um, and I will briefly introduce you all to our organization, and I'll make sure to hand over uh, to other contributors sharing their expertise and how we are approaching this topic. Combining, I believe, based on our experience, um, a combination of things that have proven to work together with innovative uh, things which we believe can really make a difference. And I, I'm sharing that being myself, uh, someone coming in this conversation with 20 plus years of experience, working and engaging closely with a good number of uh, Fortune 500 companies, procurement practices um, across the globe, and uh, really understanding that at the end of the day, um, some of the programs have proven to work, but others have basically failed. And we're at the beginning of a decade where it's important to uh, change a little bit the way we're approaching digital training uh, to really mitigate risk and accelerate on human right risk mitigation and carbon, um, carbon uh, decarbonization of our supply chains. XAPA is built as a dot organization combining three activities. The journey we have with our clients uh, starts with uh, consulting activities. Typically when we work on supply chain, we're clearly able to conduct good due diligence to understand um, the primary human rights and environmental risks across um, procurement activities, among other things that we do. Um, but the second thing is that we structure investment solutions. So in a way, to put things in simple terms, we're able to design programs 
um, which is part of our consulting work and we bring methodologies, expertises, but we're also able to design in response um, financial solutions, uh, making the model sustainable um, and uh, enabling the model to reach a certain scale. And so that's kind of uh, a combination of things that are proven to work with things which can be fairly innovative that can bring um, the digital training solutions uh, to certain scale, addressing a certain complexity for our clients. And because we don't work, it's important for us to also share a lot of our resources in an open source manner. And typically we produce on a regular basis, reports, briefing papers, um, illustrative um, um, uh, aspects of our work across blog articles. And this is today one of our uh, regular uh, webinars, which is a great opportunity for us to connect with you all. Our ecosystem of um, clients and stakeholders being generally speaking, large companies, um, and investors, um, but we are actually also, of course, in track with quite a lot of other uh, organizations. Our model is built on um, basically uh, three layers of activities for those programs. Um, we have a core team where we combine um, a set of core expertises on sustainability, agronomy, uh, IT, uh, financial uh, structuring, um, competencies and others. We work closely with a set of um, strategic partners able to complement our core expertises. And typically we work with legal uh, data sciences, um, carbon, for example, experts or organizations. And we are deploying uh, programs really um, uh, across the globe, uh, despite the challenges of COVID with a network of um, experts and uh, local organizations able to engage communities, villages uh, worldwide. And typically that's how we are able to combine, I would say desktop activities together with deep field engagement. And I think it's really important for those programs to be successful. Um, addressing, um, getting into the core, addressing responsible commodity sourcing, um, just, uh, limited number of um, opening uh, remarks to just frame the conversations. In our job, uh, we are facing a um, good number of, of discussions where our clients, and if we focus here on the corporate procurement professionals, um, face, um, and COVID-19 has accelerated or amplified these realities, um, a good number of pressures and contrary injunctions they need to manage. Um, they're displayed um, on the screen, but overall it's a combination of learning how to navigate without being able to travel first, that's important. Um, putting a strong pressure on, 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 on operational budgets and, um, and streamlining costs. And at the same time being at the forefront of um, uh, the deployment of solutions, walking the talk on commitments that can be made by the companies or that can be expected by investors in the company or by other um, internal clients in the company. Zero deforestation might come from marketing department, science-based target might come from the CEO. Um, and external uh, pressures might actually also come by uh, a regulatory framework and um, we've been based ourselves in Europe with strong, deep ex ex expertise working on human rights due diligences. We've seen in France, coming in Germany and in the EU uh, this year, um, a mandatory um, uh, human rights due diligence which has implications on how procurement practices need to really map their environmental safety, human rights risk, and need to demonstrate capacity uh, to mitigate those risks on supply chains. Um, and it's pretty complex uh, to navigate um, between those contrary injunctions. Um, these, um, uh, uh, we, we can go a little bit deeper on some of the uh, expectations um, that have to be managed uh, when it comes to responsible sourcing. But I would just add two things. Uh, the question of purpose and how customers, and we can see that in food, in luxury, in, a good number of um, segments where um, consumers uh, ask for purpose and increasingly want to make sure that some of how the products are made is 
provided with um, safe uh, criteria and understanding on their um, uh, an ethical and environmental footprint on the one hand. But if I were to look at that from a very different perspective, and for example, in the energy uh, sector, um, companies are under pressure to decarbonize activities and are switching um, a lot of their energy production from uh, fossil-based um, uh, feedstock to nature-based feedstock. And of course, the question for them is increasingly to understand how to ensure that they don't substitute problems with others. And if it's about sourcing in high quantity uh, forestry materials um, for refineries, for example, then the question comes in how to ensure that they mitigate risks of deforestation uh, and ensure social performance of smallholder and plantations uh, the, uh, growing the, um, the, the natural feedstock. So overall, a responsible sourcing is gaining momentum because across industries, uh, sourcing uh, raw materials um, in a cost-effective manner and being able to demonstrate capacity to decrease uh, environmental, ethical, and social risks is increasingly um, critical. And this is happening at a moment where, unfortunately, and again, the COVID-19 crisis has even uh, uh, made that even more exponential. Um, the uh, rural uh, activities is really suffering um, across the globe from a combination of poverty, um, of in insufficient interest by youth, uh, more interest in other activities and basically don't find that ag agricultural activities are attractive. Um, and so we really have um, to face a, an interesting um, combination of big problem from a procurement perspective and big challenges in rural areas from uh, farmers themselves, uh, disincentivized uh, to maintain um, uh, 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 agricultural activities. Uh, so um, we are, we, we've seen how they become increasingly vulnerable and how this is not something which applies exclusively to uh, what we call that emerging economies. Of course, we are um, working and operating in the countries uh, that could be like Indonesia or India where um, COVID has met um, the, 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 the crisis and poverty even more um, present. But if you look at Western economies and in Europe, for example, in an area like dairy products, um, it's clear that the level of uh, uh, farmers who are committing suicide because they can't make a living um, uh, from uh, dairy product activities is, has been very high across the recent years. So there is really something um, that is cross-cutting across uh, every market. Um, farmers and agricultural activities are extremely critical and important uh, for all of us, yet are strongly suffering from uh, poverty and insufficient attention. I will end over uh, to a team uh, who first can uh, introduce uh, himself briefly in terms of background and who can basically uh, uh, keep uh, the discussion going um, from his own experience, uh, engaging with farmers and introducing to the scale up training, traceability, and impact initiative that uh, we are driving at SAPA. Our team, welcome to the conversation. A word about yourself. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, Farid, can you hear me well? Very well. Yeah, okay. So hi everyone. Um, my name is uh, Achim Soufali. I'm an uh, agroeconomist uh, and I work um, at SAPA as a program director. So um, before working at SAPA, I um, used to work for the past 15 years uh, with uh, NGO, civil society uh, stakeholders and uh, in order to improve the capacity of uh, local organization and, and farmers. And um, it seems that at one point, uh, I realized that uh, working with the farmers only disconnected from the market was a, a constraint and a limitation. So 
it appears obvious to involve uh, more actively the, the, the private sectors and industrial partners uh, in the design of the project that uh, we are currently implementing at Xapa. And, and that's why that naturally uh, I, I have moved to um, a, a fund called Livelihood Venture, uh, where uh, big companies like Mars or Danone uh, were willing to improve their sourcing. Uh, and of course, uh, the loyalty uh, and the quality of the product that they are um, sourcing from local communities. So um, at XAPA, we have developed a specific initiative called SUTI, Scale Up Training, Traceability and Impact Initiative in order really to um, reconnect the different stakeholders along the supply chain. And um, I'm going to explain you what our uh, tools and expertise and the impact that we are uh, targeting in each our program. Uh, if you can move to the next slide, please. Yes. So. Uh, what we are aiming is uh, really uh, an impact uh, all throughout the, the supply chain uh, and, um, and of course um, with a better uh, value shared among the different stakeholders. Huh? Uh, the small other farmers, uh, we, we, saw that, we saw that today they can't live anymore with the, the current income that they get from, uh, from their product. Uh, and, uh, and, and the other side, the local industry, uh, and the processor, they can't find good quality product on a regular basis. Um, and uh, most of the supply chain um, involving the small of the farmer are usually parasite by middlemen, which spoil the relationship between the farmers and end users. So our objective at XAPA is really to restore this trust and the mutual confidence uh, in a win-win in a uh, approach. So this is the impact we want to reach. And, and the what is really to structurally improve the revenue and the livelihood of the smaller farmers. Um, it's obvious that they really, uh, the, the stakeholder in the supply chain that really needs strong support because they are producing food in a very challenging uh, context at economic, social, and environmental level, like, like as uh, Farid uh, explained you earlier, uh, this context is worsening with uh, very few programs that are unable to continue uh, on the ground. Uh, however, these, these farmers are really needed for the industry because they provide the raw material that we need today. And uh, that's why XAPA is really focusing its effort on this particular fringe of the population. And we are working on food and cash crops, but also on non-food commodities. In, and this, in this way, we really understand the farmer, the whole production system. He can have different types of crops uh, on his farm. And the how, of course, is uh, to disseminate the best practice, but also to look outside the box. That means that uh, we really, uh, we, we, we understand that the farmers uh, manage his farm like, uh, like a very complex system uh, that is really sometimes uh, difficult to understand. That's why we adopt uh, a 360 degree uh, analysis of the farm and its ecosystem in order to identify the different opportunities to maximize the value from the, the, the farm ecosystem. This contributes to get a better involvement of the farmer and of course a better ownership because you are not engaged with the farmer on one specific commodity, but several activities that are integrated in his life. So this is really how we, um, our vision on, on, on work here uh, when we deploy SUTI. On the next slide, um, you, you, you can see the role that uh, XAPA and uh, its initiative SUTI, SUTI has. We are in, uh, at the center of an ecosystem and, uh, and our role, role is uh, really to convene farmers, industrial partners, investors who are our client around the table and um, agree on the current state uh, of the supply chain that enables us to uh, define uh, the, and identify the main constraints and the opportunities. And, um, and really this shared analysis among all these uh, stakeholders is the, the foundation huh, to, to build uh, win-win strategies uh, and, um, and to, to really try to make some impact on the long run. Uh, 
I can I can give you um, some example like uh, in uh, many big companies or industrial uh, partners are used to develop CSR or uh, CSR project or a responsible sourcing project. And usually these projects are focused on yield increase or implementation of good agricultural practice uh, or implementation of standards uh, to reach spe uh, specific uh, market or niche market. Uh, but this commodity usually affects only one part of the farmer's life and only one part of, of his income. Uh, this approach appears limited because uh, this project don't really address the other urgent needs and concern of the farmers, usually for related to food and, and, and health issues. And, um, and that really uh, hampers the, the, the impact of this project because you don't get the loyalty and the trust that would uh, enable uh, the full success of the project. And our approach at SAPA is really to have a look at all on and off farm activities. Um, and and uh, Raphael, after we explain you the blended finance mechanism that we are uh, implementing at uh, XAPA, but working with different source of fundings, uh, which we usually don't rely only on grants or subsidies, allow XAPA to provide sustainable solution after the deployment uh, of, uh, of the project. And um, so we are working with the farmers uh, and monitoring their progress on one side with the industrial uh, partner, local industrial partner, which is usually a supplier of our clients. We try to improve uh, the resilience of uh, its supply shed, uh, but also uh, the visibility of, uh, of the farmers and the, uh, and, the, and the ecosystem of the, uh, of the local industry in order to Im improve the traceability, the quality, but also the loyalty of the farmers who are usually uh, the suppliers of, uh, of, of this local industry. And our investors, uh, of course, they can measure this impact because of uh, our um, uh, involvement. And uh, they can, of course, usually uh, their supplier, uh, they, they are looking for accountability from their supplier. And of course, the traceability that is uh, more and more needed uh, these days. So XAPA is really at the center of this coalition that we are building uh, from the beginning of the project. And uh, it's a, a, a role of um, animation, but also of deployment on the ground, uh, thanks to our local partner. Uh, next slide, please. Yes. So. Um, I already um, mentioned about different um, the tools that we have, but um, we are working at different level uh, in order not only to develop solutions uh, and to test them, but also to, to, to get impact at large scale. So how to get impact uh, with uh, limited cost, limited time, um, and beyond the pilot stage that uh, we are, um, usually uh, trying before the scale up. Uh, we, from the beginning, are concerned about the replicability and the scalability of our action. Uh, that's why during the pilot test, questioning our approach all throughout the implementation stage, uh, that includes, of course, the farmer feedback is major to uh, improve our impact. And of course, to, to go to scale later on. Um, and um, another tool that is, uh, really uh, unique uh, at XAPA is the, the combination of the training method. Uh, the training method is something in the heart of uh, SUTI initiative. Uh, this training method is in the same time uh, on and offline, I would say in person, physical training as uh, it used to be, but also we are providing to the farmers a, a digital solution that enables him to go deeper, to uh, also review uh, things that uh, he has learned. And this uh, combination of uh, the methodology uh, and the training content that are updated and improved uh, along the deployment of the project uh, are combined uh, with uh, uh, the, 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 
scalability process that we are engaging with our local partner in order to at the same uh, not to increase um, the staff that would uh, provide the trainings but more rely on local champions and uh, local um, local uh, community organizers and last but not the least the the, the diversity of this coalition that uh, i mentioned earlier uh, industrial partner, uh, private sector, uh, civil society, uh, really um, enable us to reach and to mobilize different types of uh, fundings uh, that can be grants, that, that can be um, uh, carbon uh, valorization as well, uh, thanks to our uh, network uh, of uh, different expertise. And this uh, coalition uh, is also very important because it creates synergy uh, that, that uh, um, allow us in, the, in our project to set up new mechanism. Um, I can, uh, as an example, we can uh, work between the farmers group and the, co uh, and the local uh, industrial partner uh, to set up uh, direct sourcing policies, to set up floor prices, to set up standards, uh, things that are usually not possible uh, because of the lack of uh, traceability and the lack of direct contact between the farmers and the local industrial partner. So uh, XAPA and its local partner enable to create uh, this relationship uh, that is, of course, uh, filled and possible because of the training program and the, the analysis at the farm level that enable us to, to get the, the impact. Um, if we go uh, uh, on the next slide, we can see a concrete example of our action and see how uh, we can empower the farmer and um, um, enabling him to have more visibility and more weight uh, all along the supply chain. So here it's, uh, uh, we call it the small orders journey. Uh, it's the uh, different stages in the project implementation uh, that shows that uh, here uh, we have uh, one farmer named Harry, uh, and we have taken uh, uh, an example of a uh, two hectare uh, farm. Um, later on, I will uh, show you the detail, but we realize uh, as a small, small of a farmer that the quality and the availability of knowledge and skill uh, is major in remote areas. However, the availability uh, and the, uh, the available time uh, of farmers is very limited and precious. So uh, it's very difficult to have uh, long session trainings that are uh, usually far from this place. That's why we are giving to the farmer the opportunity to work whenever and wherever he wants, uh, thanks to the application that will be um, uh, described later on. Yeah, and the farmer can then choose the duration and the time he wants uh, and the time uh, he wants to allocate uh, for the training. He can deepen in knowledge. He can also only uh, decide to uh, stay at a very uh, uh, basic but sufficient level of uh, trainings. And, um, and this training starts with uh, the first step, which is uh, when uh, the farmer is enrolled in the SUTI program. Uh, after uh, enrolling, he gets uh, trainings with a, a group of farmers that is, um, let's say, um, handhold and manage and also uh, by a committee organizer, but by also by a, a local farmer who is uh, the contact person of, um, of the SUTI project and its local partner. And uh, then after getting his, this training, he can still continue to um, um, go deeper in his knowledge, but also to rehearse what he has learned uh, with uh, videos and with pictures that are very easy to understand. Uh, and this uh, mobile application, of course, can work uh, offline and can be uh, very uh, uh, handy because it's very handy to uh, navigate from one screen to another. And just after the, 
uh, sharing uh, that for uh, everyone. We'll have uh, in a minute um, um, a demo live made by uh, um, another uh, a contributor. So just make, we want to make sure to save time accordingly for everyone. Yes, thanks. Um, so after um, receiving a, a, a set of training, um, uh, the farmer will uh, appreciate uh, impact at his farm um, in terms of yield, in terms of uh, quality, uh, in terms of um, impact at different level. And after that, he can even go deeper because uh, of uh, the material that is gathered in the database of uh, our application. And uh, then even go beyond if he needs uh, specific advice or specific um, exchange also with other participants from his cohort, but also the, uh, the, the trainer uh, himself. Um, then once uh, this, uh, after showing that, we can see that the SUTI approach is, is quite unique because um, we combining um, training methodology that is a kind of hybrid training methodology uh, with uh, also the, 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 the possibility to scale up uh, and to reach more people uh, using the same content or sometimes just adapting it according to the local context that can change. Um, and uh, we can generate impacts. So uh, concretely uh, to showcase the different types of impact, we can move to the uh, next slide that can show you uh, concretely uh, what are the different types of impact that uh, and the levers that the SUTI program um, is activating. So uh, this is an example, uh, a real example uh, that uh, has been uh, done in, uh, on a rice plot of two hectares. Um, from the baseline the current income that you can see on the, uh, on the lower left side, uh, we uh, set objective to reach the decent living income, which is uh, the minimal, minimal income needed to survive in the local area. Uh, and we are activating through this 360 degree analysis. And we are looking at the different component of uh, the farm ecosystem. So uh, as I mentioned, the first component is usually, usually uh, the yield, uh, increasing the yield, which is uh, uh, sometimes the very quick win that we can get. And of course, uh, along this yield increase, uh, we are uh, targeting the, the, to decrease the cost, uh, usually by shifting to more um, sustainable uh, inputs. Uh, this is usually uh, what we can find in a development project, but there are other compartments that needs to be um, looked at and that we are um, usually testing in order to replicate it and to find a, a business model and business case to be replicated to, to reach the um, uh, financial sustainability. So that can come from income diversification. Uh, you have lots of opportunities, uh, of course, working with uh, the market in order to absorb uh, the new uh, cash or food crop that are uh, usually produced in this system. Uh, circularity also is very important. Uh, we think about waste management, uh, how to reuse uh, and, and recycle uh, the, the waste uh, and the resources that you can find on the farm. Uh, working with all uh, the stakeholder of the supply chain, you can also set uh, industrial premium, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, the different expertise of XAPA uh, enable us also to uh, explore uh, and, and the potential of the carbon uh, footprint. And uh, usually we can have significant um, decrease of the carbon footprint that can be valorized in carbon credit. So uh, this is an example of the different compartment in and around the farm. Um, and this is, uh, this is the method that we, uh, in order to create more value on the same area uh, for the farmers, but also for the community. So this new source of revenue uh, contributes to reach uh, the decent living income enhancing optimization 
circularity diversification uh, at the farm level. So um, this is uh, what uh, the SUTI initiative deploy at field level, but uh, of course, uh, this uh, deployment needs uh, additional tools in order to reach uh, the, the, the number of farmers that uh, we are uh, targeting in our project. And this is uh, what uh, Christian will explain you, uh, how we can reach the scale uh, thanks to our uh, application and digital solution. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And um, I will just uh, let... Uh... Christian take the, um, the lead, uh, sharing his own uh, uh, screen for a demonstration. And in between, just to summarize, if you look at that, and thanks so much, our team, we have um, fundamentally um, a, an approach which enables to start from a risk um, and this, the, an understanding of uh, some human rights and environmental risks with farmers on the other side of the chain who basically are suffering from poverty, poor or insufficient access to training and, 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 and technical education. And in response, uh, our team described um, the kind of technical engagement um, with the very concrete benefits that we can generate, enabling to improve practices, um, improve revenues, improve retention in rural areas and decrease um, environmental um, footprint, I would say, or negative environmental practices. And we can actually also even work on safety um, from um, that perspective. But of course, the question is how to ensure to do that at a certain scale. That's actually how we connect now with a live demo of a digital application that is one of the assets that we're using, which supports um, scalability of the program. And then um, we'll have another uh, contribution from Raphael about uh, the kind of financing model that can support those systems. Christian, your turn. Thank you, Farid. Um, can you hear me well? Very well. Good. So um, very pleased to, uh, to, to have this opportunity to present uh, the SUTI digital applications that we have created. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Chateauvieux. I am uh, the uh, IT Solutions and Sustainability Manager at XAPA uh, and uh, responsible for these uh, set of applications that we've, uh, that we've just talked about. So uh, in, a, in the next uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through a quick demo uh, of uh, of that set of tools that we have developed. Uh, so in order to conduct uh, these scalable capacity building programs across fragmented value chains uh, and allow a global monitoring of the impact of such trainings uh, against uh, social, environmental and economic performance objectives, we have created three set of apps uh, at XAPA. We have created the SUTI program participant suite, uh, the SUTI operational management suite, and the global dashboard. So the participant suite is really designed for our training participants to whom we bring multiple capabilities at the palm of their hand. An, an e-learning application through which they will be able to access uh, curated technical and vocational trainings relevant to their work and life. Our survey capability, uh, which we call impact measurement, um, by which they will be able to provide data on a regular basis that will be used to assess the actual impact of the trainings on their productivity, their work and life conditions, and the environment. And for selected supply chains commodities, uh, we also have a commodity sourcing mapping and traceability capability, which will be used to record the details of participants' sales transactions. For example, um, so the crop sales between a farmer participating in our program and uh, his uh, local buyer or uh, uh, cooperative. So this is the participant suite. Then we have the global dashboard on the other end, which is designed for the SUTI program sponsors. So the industrial groups, the large companies or the pre-competitive coalitions. Uh, this will allow them to monitor and track 
all aspects uh, of the program, so the overall training progress amongst the participant population, uh, as well as the socio-economical and environmental impact of that training. And uh, for selected commodities, uh, a sourcing mapping visualization, uh, leveraging the sales transaction details uh, that were uh, populated or recorded by the participants before. And finally, we have an operational management suite, which we often refer to as the back office application. Uh, and this will allow uh, our uh, local partners uh, to manage all of the operational aspects of the program on the ground, including enrolling participants, capturing their baseline data prior to the training, managing training cohorts, deploying training contents, defining and mapping the uh, and, and managing the, the routine surveys uh, to collect field data from the participants, uh, identifying and dealing with issues, etc. This digital solution that we have developed uh, has really been designed uh, to be fully adaptable to any commodity. Uh, so um, um, it can be really used across uh, various fragmented uh, agricultural uh, uh, value chains such as natural rubber, vanilla, bamboo, sugarcane, uh, rice, etc. And uh, um, it's, it is uh, um, very easily adapted to uh, different countries, uh, both in terms of, uh, you, you, you will see in a second that uh, we have a multi-language application that uh, can adapt really to the local context uh, and uh, you know, even to the um, um, infrastructure uh, issues that we may encounter in, in particular uh, zones of the world in terms of uh, networking, for instance, or telecom in, uh, infrastructures. So I will take you through a very quick uh, demo uh, just to you know, illustrate all of these, all of these components uh, in a very pragmatic way. First off, uh, we'll have a look at uh, the, the uh, training participant suite. Uh, it is actually um, a mobile uh, web application. So it works on, uh, on any any device capable of browsing the internet, not only uh, smartphones, uh, but also older, uh, simpler uh, feature phones. Feature phones are basic uh, phones that are capable of passing uh, phone calls and, and, and sending messages, uh, but that are also equipped with a, a web browser. So provided the device has a web browser browsing capability, uh, it can be utilized. And this is very important uh, that we can support these uh, low-end devices uh, because uh, the, the populations that we are trying to target with such capa capacity building programs uh, typically don't have access to, uh, to high-end devices, don't have access to smartphones. So it is important that it works uh, on, on, such, uh, on such terminals. The, uh, Application therefore uh, really only requires a web browser to, uh, uh, to be utilized. Uh, it really resembles a, a mobile app, so it can be downloaded uh, and installed locally on the device and started as a, a regular uh, mobile app. Uh, but the, uh, the participant doesn't have to have an account in a Google uh, Play Store or an Apple uh, App Store or any other application store. So uh, essentially, all the, the farmer really needs to have is a, a SUTI participant um, code that is provided upon enrollment into the program. And, and that's it. Uh, no, no other prerequisite, uh, no accounts, no email whatsoever. So uh, the application, of course, is, is multi-language, uh, so we can adapt it to, to any, uh, any context. I will switch here to, to English language for the sake of the demonstration. Uh, its design has really been uh, um, um, thought of to be uh, as simple and sleek as possible. So uh, it is very light in terms of, uh, of text. And everything that is displayed in the application uh, can be actually dubbed uh, um, 
or uh, spoken out loud. So this application can be utilized for the digital uh, illiterate uh, person or even uh, illiterate person altogether. So we have included, for instance, get trained on best agricultural practices to improve your livelihoods. You can hear that we have included voice synthesis capabilities so that any text that may appear can be spoken out loud. And this is important because some of the, uh, you know, the, the population we're targeting uh, are, are not able to read. Upon the first start of the application, the, um, uh, there, there is a, a very short tutorial that explains to the participant what he, will, uh, he or she will get from, from it. So uh, training practice or best practices to increase productivity, reduce production costs, improve resilience and, and sustainability of their, uh, of their activities, um, work uh, group uh, aiming to improve individual performance and so on. As the person logs in and is identified into the system, uh, then uh, the, the, it is he or she is automatically granted with, a, with uh, access to uh, instructor-based, uh, instructor-controlled course or self-paced uh, training contents. So here in this particular example, uh, the, uh, the participant has access to three training courses. I will take you through one for the, uh, uh, for the sake of demonstration. And these can be of any content. It can be technical uh, content with regards to their um, uh, farming activity, or it can be soft skills or vocational training um, um, or things that are slightly beyond, uh, beyond that scope. Any, any content essentially can be uh, accommodated. Um, the, um, the, the content itself can be um, uh, controlled uh, uh, and disseminated in a gradual manner. So as you can see here, we have a number of uh, modules in that, in that particular RICE course that I've opened. Um, most of most of which are available for uh, the farmer to access, but some here are grayed out simply because they have not yet been uh, made um, available by the instructor who is on the ground and um, and conducting uh, the face-to-face -face sessions uh, with the farmers uh, uh, on on a, on, a, on a weekly basis. The reason for this uh, is, is really uh, about our, is really connected to uh, what we believe are best practices when conducting such trainings uh, on, the, on the ground. Uh, not over, overflow uh, the farmers with too much information and focus uh, on a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, manner on, on quick wins and, uh, and um, topics that are relevant uh, throughout the uh, agricultural cycle. So here, as an example, we will deep dive into one of the chapters of that RICE course, which has to do with irrigation. And we are uh, here uh, willing to explain uh, an alternate wetting and drying irrigation technique, which is an easy way for the farmer, uh, for the rice farmer here in this case, to uh, uh, reduce the quantity of water used in his field, uh, yet and at the same time increase uh, his yield. So uh, um, as you can see, the application here uh, uh, can, is multimedia uh, rich, uh, is very e easy to use. Um, it, it is uh, full of uh, graphics or uh, videos or uh, easy to use uh, content. Uh, if there is any text, it can be of course uh, spoken out loud. Uh, as I said uh, before, we have this voice synthesis capability uh, available um, in, throughout the application. Um, you, usually, we, we do spend some time explaining what the current techniques are, uh, why, you know, the pros and cons and, why, and how they can be improved, then explain uh, the benefits of the new technique, the tools uh, or practices or, or uh, methods that need to be applied uh, to apply these new uh, these new best practices. Uh, then um, videos to reinforce uh, this uh, uh, this demonstration. 
and typically uh, we will feature uh, peer farmers uh, uh, that can actually show that this practice is, uh, is, is easy to master and uh, provides clear benefits to them. Uh, also, uh, um, advise on do's and don'ts. Um, share uh, testimonial, testimonials about uh, how uh, this technique has helped uh, other farmers, either in the same zone or throughout the world, improve their uh, their yields, productivity, reduce their costs, etc. Uh, and uh, essentially, the, the the training can be stopped or or paused anytime. Uh, we can see here that I've I, we've stopped uh, um, almost uh, in the, at the middle of the of the training. We can come back exactly where we left. Uh, continue uh, and resume these, uh, this training experience. Uh, coming up soon, we will have a quiz uh, features to um, reinforce uh, the, the, uh, the learning experience uh, through games and questions. Uh, this will also be a way for the field instructors to control or, or visualize if uh, some of the participants may have difficulties about uh, um, about what is what is taught and perhaps uh, provide a, a more personalized uh, um, advice or, or, or help uh, for, for these uh, for these particular participants and uh, we uh, we will also provide uh, typically uh, frequently asked questions uh, and and additional content uh, that can be, um, accessed by the, the, the participant uh, for a further uh, reading after this, uh, this basic uh, training has been, um, has been done. So this application uh, has the advantage of, uh, of working, uh, uh, of being uh, able to work offline. Uh, this is very important uh, in, the, uh, um, in the zones that we're targeting that uh, may not have a good network connectivity. Um, and um, it is also important because the, the, the farmers uh, that, that we're targeting um, simply may not have a, an unlimited data subscription allowing them to, uh, to uh, simply go on the internet uh, as often as they, as they would. So uh, the, the content uh, is uh, automatically stored uh, on, the, on the device uh, and uh, can be replayed uh, while the farmer is uh, offline uh, in his farm um, um, as, as, many, as many times as, as possible. So uh, uh, we have really made a lot of effort to, to, to design an application that is uh, as economic uh, as, as possible uh, with that respect. Uh, so that it does not um, uh, impact uh, the budget of the of the farmers. Second, the second module here uh, on this application is the um, is the uh, survey uh, module that allows uh, uh, us essentially to collect operational data directly from the farmer to assess the impact of the training that is uh, that has been provided. Uh, we typically deliver these uh, surveys uh, in a set of simple closed uh, questions that are uh, very simple for the, for the participant to understand and, and answer. Again, with the, the same uh, voice th synthesis capability to uh, speak the questions out loud and the possible answers as well. Uh, and so uh, here I'm, I'm taking you through a very uh, simple example of questionnaire that uh, would be um, um, sent on a, on a monthly basis to, to these rice farmers, asking them uh, if they applied uh, chemical processing on their crops uh, or not, uh, what kind of uh, chemical processes was applied, uh, how much water they have used, uh, so it can be also uh, open questions, or um, um, or it could be it could be a list of um, range intervals, or or any other proxy, uh, etc. So so um, again, this this data um, sending 
functionality is also offline capable. So uh, even if there is no network connectivity uh, at, at the moment when the farmer is filling this form, uh, the data can be uh, stored locally on the phone and sent as soon as uh, a network connectivity uh, allows. And finally, within that same application, there is a, a, a transaction uh, traceability uh, feature that allows the farmer to uh, record the details about the sales transaction he or she is doing with uh, his local buyer. So um, here, it's a, again, a simple set of question where um, the farmer can select uh, which buyer uh, he or she is selling to, uh, provide details about uh, the, the quality and uh, quantity uh, of uh, crops uh, that uh, is being uh, sold. Uh, and uh, potentially also the, the price uh, at which uh, this, this uh, particular um, um, cell uh, was, uh, was done. Uh, this uh, data is also going to be stored into our central uh, backend database uh, and uh, will allow the, uh, the industrial groups and uh, buyers to uh, have then a better understanding uh, with regards to the mapping uh, of the sourcing. So this is what I wanted now to, to show you, the second aspect, the other, uh, the, the, the global dashboard, uh, which essentially is some sort of uh, business intelligence uh, uh, solution, if you'd like, that is, uh, uh, target that is um, designed for the industrial groups so they can at a glance uh, uh, monitor all the impacts all the aspects sorry of the of the program uh, the training progress uh, the uh, um, the various uh, dimensions of impact of that training uh, and the trends uh, over time and uh, finally uh, um, the, the back office application, um, which is a set of tools that we, we uh, typically make available to our local partners who uh, are uh, uh, conducting the face-to-face um, the -face, uh, um, uh, ses training sessions on the ground and ha that have to deal with all the operational um, aspects of the program. Uh, including enrolling farmers, creating uh, farmer groups uh, into and, and, and deploying courses uh, in these training cohorts, uh, managing uh, uh, the deployment schedules, uh, monitoring uh, the, uh, the progress of the farmers in, in or, the, of the, or the cohorts in terms of uh, um, uh, training management and so forth. So that was, in a nutshell, uh, the, um, the, the suite of apps that we have de designed. Um, Farid, back to you. Yeah, excellent. So just uh, switching screen. And um, as we are doing this, I um, just want to summarize um, a few very interesting, um, I think, uh, uh, takeaways uh, from um, the digital application. If you look at that clear carefully, we have a system which enables uh, to track um, individual um, participants in an aggregated manner um, and uh, in a way which from the farm perspectives ensures that each has access to uh, content. And of course, as Hatim mentioned earlier, uh, we combine that uh, preferably in a face-to-face -face system as well to ensure that there is adoption, that there is, it's not just an on-the-shelf solution, I mean. Um, another aspect, because we are going to connect briefly now to um, impact measurement and um, the kind of financing, financial model that we put behind those systems. And for that, to make the connection, a second aspect that is very interesting is that we can have, and there's been some calculations here, people who are directly involved in the face-to-face -face training activities who are using the digital application, but when they go back on the farm, 
they can uh, disseminate the content to a much broader number of people. Um, and an example that we have top of mind in India, it can be between one to 10 to 15, meaning that we know that when we recruit a uh, hundred people uh, or a thousand people or 10,000 people, through the digital platform, we're able to reach then 500 people, 5,000, 50,000 people of ind indirect beneficiaries. The other aspect through um, uh, what has been uh, shared um, and with the, uh, the way we are able to uh, conduct regular surveys and shares that when we are exploring impact, we have very concrete data that we can collect to check on the impact. So if from a procurement perspective, we have a big question related, for example, to biodiversity preservation and uh, reduction of chemical product, then through the platform and through the regular surveys, we're able to say that at the beginning, we had a baseline number on average across farmers of let's say 100 of chemical units. And over time, we can see whether um, through the regular uh, surveys which are submitted, we decrease at that baseline uh, to a target, let's say, of 50%. And we have very concrete data to demonstrate that. And I take the time to explain that, uh, to connect that with the financial structuring of the SUTI program. Um, and uh, to end over uh, a few minutes uh, to Raphael, um, who is uh, uh, sharing uh, first a quick uh, overview of your background. And, um, and we'll make sure uh, that uh, for sake of uh, managing time of everyone, uh, we'll stick to uh, just a few more minutes um, of presentation. Yeah. Rafael, who are you? So I'll try to be quick. Uh, sorry for uh, being a bit late uh, in this webinar, but it's uh, the reflect of our passion for our social innovation. And um, so in a few words, uh, I'm Rafael Hara, Managing the Director of SAPA, uh, in charge of all impact investment activities and services at SAPA, but also ESG and sustainable finance consulting. My background is rather financial. And I used to take care of uh, investment processes from A to Z, let's say, from um, let's say in, in, in the fund and asset management industry, from the legal and financial structuring to um, financial strategy, investment strategy, investment analysis, uh, and acquisition and financing of real assets uh, and companies' acquisition, and also uh, operational management. So. I bring that uh, financial expertise in rather uh, international schemes for uh, players from uh, Asia or Europe uh, that was uh, acting as investors. Um, what I just wanted to point out is that uh, we are quite solutions oriented and long-term value creation oriented. And uh, we believe that uh, the convergence of agendas um, of industrial players uh, and investors for the benefit of the many, in, in our case of Suti, small holding farmers, um, are key to deliver the, the necessary benefits for, uh, for uh, the common interest. And uh, we lean on local partners, as mentioned by Atim, but also on global partners that can help us to have a consolidated, consolidated view in uh, the different programs and different commodities we will be acting in, um, such as MAZA for financial and extra financial audit, or RSM for uh, accountancy and tax, but also uh, very specialized uh, partners such as uh, Unique for Carbon Expertise or uh, Palo IT for the development of our IT solutions. Um, in a few words, uh, the SUTI uh, Value proposal is uh, based on three models uh, that we have uh, already uh, mentioned in this webinar for the two first ones, which is the program design and operational management, but also as uh, a digital solutions that Christian uh, just uh, presented. And the third part is the idea that to, to reach large scales, we have to organize these uh, solutions as impact investment schemes. Um, of course, we can assembly these modules uh, differently. We don't have to organize an impact investment scheme to uh, deliver a SUTI program for a, a limited number of people, but to reach large scales, it's really a, a financial lever that is very powerful. Um, and for that, we decided to organize um, the business model of SUTI 
Um, so here we zoom on a thematic program for a special community, a particular community in a country, particular country. And we decided to organize it to use all the levers so that the initial investment that we can gather gets uh, gradually the more impact and the more, uh, the most perennial impact um, using um, all kinds of uh, revenues levers which are sometimes uh, just the, S the ID2 assembly existing levels, but also to create new ones. For example, we explore new methodologies for carbon valuations. Um, and uh, by assembling industrial players participation, carbon valuation, um, also grants and blended finance solutions, in particular incentives or pay for success, but also de-risking schemes to guarantee totally or partly the initial investments to, of uh, private resources for the common good. Uh, all these levers are used to scale up and gradually to touch uh, an increasing number of people. Uh, so that uh, in a performing and, a, and a sound economic scheme, we get the most impact. And of course the outcomes will be uh, uh, financial returns, but also positive social or environmental impact that could be uh, that will be uh, certified by the third party organization um, and probably our partner Mazar. And to finish, just a quick view on uh, what could what is a typical uh, Suti organizational organizational structure in terms of investment with uh, investor that finance global approach of Suti um, and SPVs, special purpose vehicle, in which you can organize uh, commodities program in different countries and in which thematic project investors can also participate if, uh, for example, uh, uh, you have a, a rice industrial uh, that is interested in uh, uh, improving its social environmental performance uh, for its supply chain in uh, Thailand, then it would be able to invest only in the rice program, which is different from the general investors that would invest in a Suti fund um, irrigating uh, all uh, commodities program. Well, I try to be quick. I hope I, I made it. You have been quick uh, and great. Um, so just because we're running a bit out of time, I take the time to um, welcome you all to take part in the poll, which is uh, being submitted. So um, it's good for us to collect your feedback. Um, a way to kind of summarize a little bit some of the um, latest uh, part that has been shared. Interestingly, because we are uh, reaching um, a way to collect data from people and building revenues uh, streams from the programs in that you could see a couple of, um, of, 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 uh, of streams. Um, we're able to think in terms of working capital for the system and that's um, a good way to transfer some kind of uh, things that have proven to work uh, and address uh, those um, solutions to issues which are in deep need uh, for working capital uh, resources. And that's a good uh, way to kind of change the perspective of how we can scale up those programs. Um, there have been uh, um, a few questions. So I will just ask um, uh, uh, our uh, contributors to uh, uh, address those questions. And basically that will be um, kind of the closing remarks as well to, to be on time. So Atim, I would have one question for you, and it relates to uh, how uh, whether we are capable um, to uh, uh, address um, uh, the same program with workers in plantations, if they're not smallholders, but if they are uh, working in plantations. Just you take on that, and maybe your closing um, your closing point from uh, your experience on on, on those programs would be great. And another question uh, that might be uh, Christian can share. We could see uh, a version, and uh, so you can uh, respond to these two questions in a row. 
Uh, so Christian, the question is whether um, the, the solution that we're talking about is a solution where if we want to work across different markets, we can have one same content um, and there can be some scales here in terms of content production that can then be uh, shared across multiple markets. So in a way, if it's about, you know, you're sourcing similar product in uh, two or three different countries, you can maximize, optimize the digital platform uh, to disseminate, um, you know, to build once and disseminate in multiple times, uh, excluding, of course, the question of translation and uh, local uh, adoption. So Atim, maybe a quick response um, to the question, uh, Christian Singh, and uh, we'll have to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... Regarding the first question, uh, are we working with uh, people who don't own their land? So usually the people they have, uh, if they don't have a, a proper uh, title deed, uh, they have the, let's say, uh, the local uh, agreement uh, to, to use the land and to benefit from uh, the, the, the production. If it's not the case, we are also working with laborers, uh, but also share corporates. Uh, because they are workers and they are workers on the farm, so they also benefit from the trainings if they uh, if they uh, if they can. But also, we are working a lot on other uh, social aspects, such as such as uh, working conditions, uh, the different risk uh, in in, in uh, working um, in agricultural activity, the different uh, awareness on. Um, uh, chemical in inputs, but also uh, health and safety. Uh, so we are also trying to work with uh, our local partners to um, reduce the risk uh, related to uh, heavy duties. Um, and, and we are uh, involving them. Uh, usually these people, they have uh, more time uh, and less work to, to uh, opportunities. So when we create diversification opportunities or circular economy, it's usually at the group farmer group level. And these people are involved because they uh, can involve uh, in a, let's say more intensively. So um, of course, uh, if uh, we realize that um, uh, an important share of the uh, rural farmers uh, or rural population are laborer or uh, people who don't know, don't own their land, we develop specific activities, of course, uh, for the sake of the, the social impact that we want to reach uh, at the community level. And, and of course, the, the, the second question, uh, I think it's, uh, it's one of the objective of, uh, of our tool is to develop models that, of course, there are some uh, local um, differences, um, I mean, uh, on the messages, the way, the, the way to convene the messages in the, in the, in the app, like uh, Christian showed you, uh, but it's very easy to adapt. The content is very easy to adapt. And usually, uh, for instance, when you have uh, one technique, um, let's take uh, again the rice uh, transplanting technique, for instance, is the same all over the world. Uh, so the main, the core content of the of the trainings can be, of course, reusable um, after a small um, uh, adaptation to the local context. Absolutely, and uh, just to complete your answer, Hatim, uh, as I think the question was also uh, regard related to the technical aspects of the of the solution. Uh, so yes, it is of course possible to have one uh, same content that can be deployed across uh, dif different geographies, different countries. Um, uh, it could be either exactly the same content or uh, different contents that are that have been tailored uh, for the need of the, the uh, ad adaptation to the local context. Uh, a, a third question, uh, I think, for you, Farid, um, which is uh, if this application, if this program works for uh, mineral supply chains as well. So I've, I've answered that we do have already some experience in that, in that area. Do you want yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, sure. And um, actually, at the end of the day, it's very similar, given that the, the features in the, 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 are... Um, if you look at the profile uh, that you want to address here, if you are talking about artisanal miners or because we had the, the, the discussion about minings and, and workers in minings, 
at the end of the day, the question of how to reach them uh, on the support that uh, can be uh, um, uh, a, a digital um, application uh, disseminating content um, and a system which can even record uh, some of the transactions uh, to get a sense of traceability. I share this to say that fundamentally we are actually already in discussion um, for some uh, sensitive uh, minerals, um, which tend to prove basically that yes, the short answer is the same uh, framework and uh, architecture uh, can clearly well apply to, to minerals uh, and sensitive minerals. And I would just ask also maybe Raphael then, then, um, to have a closing remark um, about your perspective um, uh, on um, one thing that uh, is a question coming also, the complexity to uh, add uh, carbon uh, a carbon component, maybe can you share an example of how that can potentially apply to the system because that can be a, a smart way uh, to build um, and generate some revenues and retain a value for the farming activity for the farmer. That sounds to be a little bit complex. So if you look at that particularly from a financial structuring perspective, how that can work. Yeah, so I guess that here again, the digital lever is very important because um, in uh, current uh, carbon schemes, um, there's a, a high cost of uh, gathering data. And then the idea to be able to gather data directly from the small orders with, of course, uh, different level of control, different levels of control is very powerful in terms of cost efficiency and uh, potential of scaling up, which means that we can uh, address a large scale in, Capacity, capacity building programs that are co-financed by the carbon lever with, of course, a, a long-term uh, relationship to, be, to build with smallholders. And, um, for example, the valuation of intercropping, of uh, change of practices, diminution of entrants, uh, is typically a very good lever to, to reach those large scales. Um, because since it's not as powerful in terms of car carbon sequestration as um, for example, uh, reforestation of degraded lands, then you would, you would have to need, you, would, you will need very large scale of, uh, of uh, in terms of number of farms to, to, to be uh, uh, economically variable. So since our programs are meant to bring this uh, improvement of revenues, diversification of revenues, carbon is really a very good at string to, to pull on to, to increase the potential and the scaling of scaling up of these programs. Thank you so much. We need to close uh, and uh, we've been uh, beyond uh, time, um, uh, but thanks for the questions and your engagement. Um, I would uh, just flag a few things uh, to close the discussion today. Uh, thank you for responding to the poll, one, two, um, the content of this presentation is available online uh, within 24 hours um, as part of um, our activities. It's accessible in an open source manner, so you can feel free to download, podcast, share with colleagues and others. Um, and we are, of course, happy to be um, uh, in contact with you if you have additional questions, um, which uh, you can use to contact at xapa.org. And don't worry, these email really work and uh, it's very lively and you will get um, a response. Um, as part of our series of webinars, uh, the upcoming one will be on uh, human rights due diligence um, and the legally binding instruments to date in, um, the 20, on the 27th of April. Uh, that will be a, an opportunity to get an update on some of the most uh, recent um, uh, regulatory uh, frameworks at stake and uh, good practices for companies to adapt um, to those um, um, environments. And um, it's really part of a series. We have a strong expertise in that topic. And as you can see, it connects pretty well with the topic here. And that's really the value proposition of uh, XAPA. Um, we bring our clients in a journey where we're able uh, to work on the human rights due diligence. And if this focuses for some of it on supply chain, we're able to design solutions. And if this includes um, particular attention on sensitive uh, sourcing activities, here you've been able to see uh, how we are able to apply scalable uh, systems providing information 
to demonstrate capacity to mitigate risks over time. Uh, these are, of course, long-term commitments, pretty complex, and that's exactly what we are happy to do and uh, to uh, in uh, in co-creation with with all of you. Thank you very much. Feel free to follow uh, our LinkedIn page if you want to be um, aware of our latest uh, development. Um, our Twitter account is also an excellent way to uh, to keep abreast on our um, um, materials that uh, we are releasing on a very regular basis. And uh, just be aware of, uh, of our initiatives. We've been delighted um, to count on your um, presence in those conversations. And uh, let's get in touch. Uh, contact at xapa.org. We wish you all an excellent day, uh, evening, um, if depending on where you're connecting with us. And um, happy to be in touch again. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks.